Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're taking a look at welding heat input and we're gonna compare some different settings and techniques. Now, we're looking at MIG welding today, but the same principle that we'll look at will apply whether you're TIG welding or stick welding. So we're gonna run one weld that is at a low wire feed speed or amperage and a low voltage and one that's up at the top end of the range on wire feed speed and voltage. Now to look at the overall heat input, we're gonna do a couple different things. One, we're gonna monitor the voltage and amperage while I'm actually welding. And we're also going to use some thermal imaging. All right, this is the thermal imaging camera we're gonna use. It's from HSF Tools. These kind of things used to be like tens of thousands of dollars. Now this one is, you know, 300 and something bucks, which is pretty crazy because I can point it around. You can see even like the studs in the walls. So I'm just gonna run a couple of T-joints here to test this out uh, on one eighth inch or three millimeter thick material. And I'm gonna start off with these lower settings. Now, a lot of people, ask me, you know, how do I keep my heat input low so I can avoid distortion and things like that? And the initial impression for most beginners is to turn down your settings. So you run something really low like this. Now with a low setting, you have to use quite a bit of gun manipulation to fill out that fillet weld. And this is like what you do pretty often in motorsports or things like that, um, where you see those uh, ripples. They, they ripple out a lot more on thicker, like quarter inch thick material. On eighth inch like this, it's a bit more of a challenge to get that same look, but uh, it's still somewhat doable. So that's what we're running here. Now notice that I'm right around 80 amps on the left display there on the machine and 17.3 volts over on the right. And over on the left side of the screen, you can see the thermal imaging results where it's really bright right behind the weld and then out from that, you can see how much that heat soaks out into the material. All right, for that weld, it ran at about 80 amps and 17.3 volts. So that's right around 1400 watts, kind of like a hairdryer on low. And it took 42 seconds to run that weld for a total of 58 kilojoules of energy that went into the weld. Now let's go ahead and run with some higher settings. I'll turn that wire feed speed and voltage up and we'll see how that does. Okay, I'm gonna use a push technique here. I could use a drag technique also, but I'm not doing any kind of manipulation. I'm just moving the straight line across the whole joint here. And I'm focusing my arc up on the leading edge of that puddle to make sure I get good penetration down into the root. I was trying to do that before, but it's a little easier here when I'm just running straight. And notice the difference with the thermal imaging, and we'll put them side by side in a minute, but you can see how much less of the coupon is heating up around it, even though we are running these higher settings. Now with the higher wire feed speed and voltage, we ended up right around 130 amps and 18 volts. That multiplies out to give us 2,340 watts of power. That's quite a bit more than with the lower settings, but the big difference is the weld only took 17 seconds to run that four inches instead of the 42 that we ran before. So overall, with the 17 second run, we were right around 40 kilojoules. I lined these up so the ends of the welds would finish at the same time. So notice on the left at the low settings how much the coupons around the weld are lighting up. They're just getting really hot. Where on the high settings, not nearly as much because I'm getting in and moving along quickly. If we look at the back side of the actual welds, you can see with the heat tint, that's another indication that those low settings, you're putting quite a bit more heat in. And this is something that you can pay attention to on your own welds uh, to give you some indication. By running the lower, colder settings, we ended up increasing our overall heat input by about 50%. And this is pretty typical. When you run lower settings, you have more time for that heat to transfer out. And you can see that in the thermal imaging results that uh, right after the weld is done, the whole thing is soaked with heat on the lower settings, but not as much on the higher settings. And so because of that, you're able to get in, even though it's more power going in, you finish and you get out. And usually by running higher settings and moving faster, that's how you minimize heat input. And on top of that, you're going to also reduce the time that it takes, right? It took two and a half times as long to run the weld at the lower settings than the high ones. So given this range of settings, 
I would tend towards the high because of this, but are the welds themselves actually equivalent or of equal quality? So these are the results. On the left, you have a little bit more of that rippled appearance, and on the right, it's a little bit more smooth. So the first characteristic we're gonna look at is the overall fillet weld size, how these compare. So this is a fillet weld gauge, and so I can hold it up here, and you can see where it looks just a bit over 3 16 but you gotta check the low spot. And so really it's right about 3 16 on the money, which 3 16 of an inch is, uh, you know, for cyclically loaded on eighth inch, that's pretty typical. Might be a little bit big for some static stuff. You can see here it's just a hair smaller than 3 16 but I'd have more confidence in the penetration on the straight stringer. But in a simple bend test here on this 1 8 inch, these sizes, you know, nothing's opening up. Both of them are going to be adequate in a lot of cases, to be honest with you, but you're going to have less trouble overall, um, generally speaking, with a straight stringer than you will whenever you're putting in some kind of large manipulation. All right, so at the end of the day, when you have a range of settings, for me personally, I like to run up at the top. I get that sometimes you need to lay in some dimes on some quarter inch material to fit in with like motorsports type parts. And if you need to do that, I'm not mad at you at all. It's just important to be aware that running a lower setting doesn't mean that you're putting in overall less heat input. In fact, you're probably gonna put in more and have more of a fight with things like distortion and uh, overall effect on the material. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in. If you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and be sure to check out the description for a uh, link to my online courses. If you're just getting into welding and fabrication, I can fast track your progress learning at home by walking you through the whole process step by step for only 39 bucks. You'll find that link down in the description. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time.